I know we did a bunch of like by-election discourse a couple of days ago, but I have to rehash it. It's been the talk of the town for the last couple of days, right? So everyone's been talking all of this time about the fact that Labour should have won in Uxbridge. Oh, it's all about Ulez. It's Sadiq Khan's fault that Labour didn't win in Uxbridge. And right, so there's, there's so much I want to say about this. I feel like it's going to take forever to be free to go through it. But I'm going to reiterate a couple of points from a couple of days ago. The first one I'm going to reiterate is that this is a very conservative constituency. The fact that Labour came close to winning the seat shows that they did really really good already right to get from a 7000 vote deficit to a 500 vote deficit or whatever it might be so they already did pretty well in a very very heavily conservative area getting it to the point at which they almost won the seat that's already an achievement obviously sunak and co are still acting like that it was achievement that they didn't lose it when really really and truly like labor did pretty good to get to the point of potentially winning in the first place but they failed at expectation management the entire time thinking expecting to win it and then not winning it when it was never a foregone conclusion regardless and now having to dial that back down by finding a scapegoat or we should have won this easily and we, we didn't so let's try and find a scapegoat to blame incredible incredible com communications incredible optics from the labor party given that they t overturned a twenty thousand vote majority in selby to then put uh, baby keith up to the top of the podium as far as that particular constituency is, is concerned obviously a less sticky constituency as far as voting is concerned because it's a northern leave voting area rather than like the uh middle class like london commuter town area which is a very different demographic of people less politically malleable very difficult to turn people around on this but of course they didn't really understand that when trying to campaign expecting to win and then didn't so there has to be a scapegoat and of course the scapegoat that they've chosen is Sadiq Khan the scapegoat is the uh, ultra low emission zone expansion that was seen to be a kind of political hot button topic when it came to the Uxbridge constituency which is theoretically going to be in the ultra low emission zone once it gets expanded now they're attacking Sadiq Khan for this I would like to point nip this in the bud to start off by saying this isn't a Sadiq Khan policy the ULES policy is a Boris Johnson policy. Sadiq Khan agrees with it, which is fine. I also agree with you, Les. But the expansion of ULES into Uxbridge was part of the terms for TFL funding that was handed down to Sadiq Khan by the then Transport Secretary Grant Shapps. So this isn't a Sadiq Khan policy. This is a Conservative policy. Even if it was to blame, then Sadiq Khan shouldn't be held accountable for something that's being done up, up, upon the whims of both Boris Johnson and Grant Shapps. So it doesn't make any sense in the first place. Although, as I said, I don't think it really had that much of, a, of an effect, given that Labour did much better than they otherwise would have done in a seat which is very 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 backbone conservative as far as seats are concerned that doesn't make any sense at all either but one thing i'd noticed from all of this one thing i'd noticed from all of this in a world in which they failed at expectation management and have gotten to the point where they're having to find a scapegoat to blame it's interesting that i found out that people were briefing this out to the press labor mps were talking about ulis expansion being to blame for this to the press immediately they immediately were starting to blame ULES for this. Immediately starting to blame Sadiq Khan, so much so that apparently there was a private phone call between Sadiq Khan and Keir Starmer about trying to roll back on ULES as a particular policy platform. Even though majority of Londoners support it, it's the kind of policy that once people get used to it, they tend to then uh, they then support it, even if they oppose the implementation of it. And Keir Starmer, not two months ago, was already supporting ULES when he was asked about it on LBC. They did this point where with their complete heel turn on policy based upon a, a change in the gust of wind, rather than any actual change in levels of support for the policy really and truly as far as the greater London area is concerned. But the fact that Labour were briefing this early, first of all it tells you that Labour were briefing it early specifically because they wanted to be able to deal with the fact that they had failed to manage expectations. But I have another theory on top of this, right? This maybe this is just a theory, this is extrapolation, do not read too much into this, right? It's going to sound very tinfoil hat, but it really sounds to me like there's a deliberate desire from the Labour leadership and the Labour HQ to try and not de-legitimise Sadiq Khan specifically because he's an election winning machine, look to have an unprecedented extra term as London mayor. But they deliberately try and make sure that Sadiq Khan tax right. Not that breathing clean air is necessarily a left issue, which is the whole point of ULES, but it's clear when you look at the way in which people support or oppose ULES, it is pretty much cor completely correlative with traditional party support. Conservative supporters that don't like ULES, Labour supporters back it. It's as simple as that. That's where most of the support for this stuff and the opposition to it comes from is based on party affiliation so what they want to try and do is 
they've got this new brand. They've got this new brand image for the Labour Party. They want to paint it as not being the party of the new of the liberal metropolitan elite, which is clearly what Sadiq Khan represents as London is the hub of the metropolitan liberal elite. They want to demetropolitanize the party's brand image. And when Sadiq Khan is one of the most senior members of the Labour Party with a lot of power, they want to try to get him to tone down his rhetoric because they know that ULEZ as a policy platform is something that Labour Party's members support, Labour Party people support, and Conservative voters just tend to not support. And people outside London don't like Sadiq Khan as much as people inside London like him because London's like its own little world as far as electoral politics is concerned. It's completely different from the remainder of the country in demographic, in voting trends, etc, etc. So they're trying to essentially attack Sadiq Khan, trying to get him to move rightwards to try and stop him from tainting the overall party brand. They do this with all of their metro mayors, by the way. They, you saw what happened with Jamie Driscoll. We've seen what happens with Andy Burnham and we've seen what happened with Sadiq Khan as well. They're very happy. Again, considering that this is supposed to be the party of devolution of putting power into the hands of people's own communities to then say, well, actually, no, I know your community wants this, but that's bad for the Westminster party. So we're going to come and interfere with you to stop you from able to do that on a local level, which is why they are suddenly at a contretemps with Andy Burnham and obviously Jamie Driscoll's left the party over this stuff as well. But they're trying to trying to attack Sadiq Sadiq Khan over this. It was a massive, like, the, it's the only explanation for this gigantic kind of tone shift where the a very narrow by-election loss in a very difficult to win seat a seat so difficult to win they didn't even win it in 1997's landslide that they're now saying well we expected to win this and we didn't so now we've got to find a massive scapegoat so yeah this is the only this is the only possible explanation that they're trying to change the party's brand by attacking Sadiq Khan specifically when really and truly Yulez really wasn't to blame for any of this at least though now we have the official news that Sadiq Khan is staying committed to keeping the Yulez which is good i'm glad that he's doing that uh stand by it after the uxbridge loss because again it's been massively blown out of proportion for no reason at all sources close to city hall say the mayor of london remains committed to extending it but is happy to look at new ideas to mitigate its impact on london it's incredible that even sadiq khan right even sadiq khan after kind of his melt behavior before is seen as too left wing by the party establishment for their overall new kind of national brand image that they've got going on and look, i don't get wrong i have I have some time for sadiq khan he seems pretty reasonable liberal type of guy like i'm not going to massively go against him even though he was one of the melts who was a, uh, in opposition to Jeremy Corbyn. I'm not going to throw out the baby with the bathwater on this one and say that I think he's fine as a mayor. He's progressive. He supports council housing. He's built lots of council housing actually in London. Most of the council housing that's, council housing that's been built recently is London council housing, which uh, local councils and the permission from Sadiq Khan is relevant for. So I'm not going to go out and chide him forever on this kind of stuff. And air pollution is just an important thing. And it's incredible. We've got roads on fire, right? The Greek islands of roads are literally on fire right now. And we are just kind of overturning on climate policy where Grant Shapps wants to plough ahead with every single oil and gas field that they possibly can right now already. And Keir Starmer wants to drop back on the green commitment policy and drop back on policies that are to mitigate air pollution. Just shows you how kind of dumb our politics are where everyone's chasing this tiny, small percentage of voters and destroying every single important policy to be able to get there based upon the they think are actually changing people's policy preferences across the country when in general most people in this country are pro policies to deal with air pollution they're pro policies to get us towards net zero and these are all policies that are being dumped right all these climate policies are getting dumped i'm like what are you doing we're trying to win over reform uk supporters by their opposition to net zero by dropping all these pro climate policies what the fuck is going on really really strange quite frankly i'm just glad that the metro mayors are standing up for it andy burnham criticized the factualism sadik khan not backing down on ulez jamie Gris driscoll quitting the party and i can only think that it's specifically being done by the labor leaders by the labor leadership by labor hq specifically to damp to you know, to damage sadik khan specifically to use him as a scapegoat again it's just like boris johnson it's just like boris johnson's time when anything bad went wrong under boris johnson there was always a fall guy there was always a scapegoat and there was always somebody else to blame who would get the chop to try and save the mothership rather than just blaming the leadership or in this case not blaming anybody at all you can just have an election that you lose because it's a difficult constituency to win the really simple Occam's razor explanation for this is that Uxbridge is a safe Tory seat. It was going to be difficult to win. They got close, but, you know, close but no cigar. But at least we can support the fact that they won in Selby and that they had a really large increase in the vote share in Uxbridge. That could be a thing that Labour could be saying right now. But that doesn't have a, like, a national message that they can then use to attack 
the, the positions of the party that they feel are too left-wing. Even melts like Sadiq Khan, even people like Neil Lawson, even Ed Miliband, right? These people are now fair game for attacking, for being seen as a little bit too liberal. And that's how pathetic the leadership are. Rather than just giving a really simple explanation like it was close but we failed, they go, this all comes down to Sa Sadiq Khan and Ulez. Let's find the scapegoat. Let's blame somebody. It's exactly the same as Boris Johnson. Exactly. Stalin would have been better off not saying anything. Just said, it was close. We did pretty well to get close, but you know, we'll see what happens at the next general election. Let's focus on Selby and Ainsley. And look, they, they literally, they could be focusing on this gigantic swing in a northern constituency saying, look, we're not just winning red wall seats now. We're winning Yorkshire seats. We're winning rural seats. We, are, The Conservative Party are so damaged electorally that now we're now winning seats that we have no business winning in rural areas in the north. Some metropolitan borough in London, whatever, now it was close, but no cigar. But Selby, they should be pointing to as a look how terrible the Conservatives are, that they are losing these elections by such gigantic swings in Selby and Ainsley, in Somerton and Froome, in Tiverton and Honiton, in Somerset, right? All of these huge swings away from the Conservatives could be used specifically to skewer them on a national basis. And instead of doing that, they're saying, well, actually, we lost this election. Let's focus all on this. Let's focus on this London policy. Let's focus on Sadiq Khan. Let's make the media spend their entire time talking about the divisions within the Labour Party. Let's spend the entire time of the media talking about the Labour's failure in Uxbridge. It's completely nightmarish communication. Unless you specifically believe that you want to get the media attacking your own party to try and have justifications for internal party purges and pushing the factionalism. And I would I would not put this past the Labour leadership try and give up on overall gains by attacking the Conservatives, by the media attack on the Conservatives, by letting the media attack people in their party that they don't like. It is factionalism on steroids. But it's axe grinding. That's exactly what it is. Does it damage Sadiq Khan? He doesn't have to worry about an individual constituency. Across all London, ULES polls well overall. It's a good chance for him to grandstand on it. Might help him. But I think you're right there, uh, Horatio, in the I do think that it's reasonable to say that Sadiq Khan won't be damaged by this. But the fact, but the real problem I take is that there's just this obsession with factionism this obsession with this kind of full guy blame game and not just a full guy blame game that they're doing react in reaction to something a, f a full guy blame game that they are deliberately pushing they're deliberately briefing that they're deliberately trying to double down on and make the talk of the town i just don't get it i don't get the strategy what's going on it's performative it's de it's, it's deliberately performative and that's what irks me if you enjoyed this video, please do consider liking and subscribing. It does help out the channel and the algorithm. And if you click the bell notification icon, it will let you know when I go live and when I upload videos. If you'd like to follow me on social media, my handle is at NoJusticeMTG, and that is Twitter, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, Twitch, and YouTube. If you want to support my channel in a more financial manner, you can do so by becoming a member for just 99p, by super chatting, or by supporting me on Patreon, with the link is in the description of this video. And hopefully I'll catch you on the next segment.